The washed fleeces are ready to be taken to the local wool mill. They're surprisingly heavy, aren't they, even when they're dry? They are surprisingly heavy. It's the grease, probably, that comes up in these fleeces. And they're long wool fleeces, of course, as well. But this is their last journey. All that work! All that work, but now we hope for payday. Oh. Payday for Dartmoor's white gold. This is precious fleeces. Oh, I promise I'll look after it. I'll keep a very good eye on it, I promise. Well, mind it doesn't <laughs> fall out the back. All the best to you, Ruth. See you. All the best. Thank you. <laughs> Ruth has arranged to deliver the fleeces to Peter Fisher at Cold Harbour Mill. Hello, Ruth. Pleased <laughs> to meet you. Nice to see you. What a wonderful place. Yes, you managed to find us all right. Oh, yes? Well, I just followed the <laughs> chimney, you know. <laughs> now a working museum, in the early 1900s, Cold Harbour Mill was at the forefront of Devon's woolen industry. It established the company Fox Brothers & Co. as a renowned global exporter of woolen goods including putties for the armed forces. So this is what this mill was making, the yarn for these? They were, yes. I mean, obviously all the uh, British regiments and uh, Commonwealth countries, as well, empire countries as it were then. <laughs> and then later on, even the Germans had them. Really? Yes. Uh, Devon wool. I think that's really quite, quite rather nice, isn't it? Devon wool all over the world. Using water power to drive its heavy machines, the mechanised mill turned fleeces into high-quality yarn. Right, Ruth, well, here's your fleece going into the hopper. For Righty -ho. To remove any remaining dirt and to separate the fibres, the wool is fed through a carding machine. Fleece is just gradually drawn in. Yeah. And then just it just really goes from roller to roller. Roller to roller, each time being combed, in essence, combed over and being over a bit and over again. Out a little bit more, that's right. Sort of separating all the fibres, making them fluffy, let the dirt fall out. Oh, and well, I can see it coming out the far end. That's right. It looks so well, it different, gradually it? gradually works its way around to the other end, yep. Yeah. See the difference. All sort of knotty and tight up, and this is all sort of fluffy and organised. After the wool has been carded, it's drawn out to eight times its original length. <laughs> Being drawn out through the roll, and as it comes down the flying arm, a little bit of twist is put into it. Right, so we've got sort of like fat fluffy string at this place. That's right, well, that's called the slubbing. <laughs> so then from this machine on to the next? That's right, now we've prepared it, we can start spinning. In the spinning process, the wool is twisted and drawn out to create a thinner yarn. So these are off the last machine, the big fluffy string. Yep. Here's our slubbings on the top, drawn out between the two sets of rollers, but of course much more twist being put into it now. Yeah, I can see they're spinning really much, much faster. All to be driven by the water wheel, yep. All these belts and rollers, all blinking, noisy, clackering off. So these are the threads that have already been spun, but, I mean, they're pretty useless in that state, aren't they? If you take the tension off, if I just sort of open a bit up, you can see it wants to sort of go all knotty and kinky. To produce a knitting yarn, Three threads are folded together on a twisting frame. So all the twist in that goes one way. That's right. And then this, when That's you put right. it on here, yep. spins Going the, the other, other way. way. And they sort of lock each other yeah. in position. Just the same as making ropes. So that's the finish yarn. So if you see if I untwist it, you can see there it is, three completely separate bits of stuff. And, and you can sort of see in my fingers, they're wanting to knot. As soon as they're untwisted, they're wanting to go into horrible little knots. Let the twists go back in, and it's perfectly comfortable. I just really like this about, you know, textiles. It's just so clever. It's really simple, but clever, isn't it? I mean, it's the basis of everything. String, rope, 
textiles, clothes. You know, suspension bridges are built using this technology, aren't they? With wire, that's right. In its heyday, Cold Harbour Mill employed over a hundred people to work its machines. They worked long hours in dangerous and noisy conditions for minimal wages. Boy, is it noisy. You would go deaf if you worked in this any less well, time. Well, in a weaving shed, you'd have many more than this. In fact, you won't have 400 looms. I know that the weavers themselves were usually adults, but in a mill like this in the Edwardian period, an awful lot of the work is being done by quite young workers, isn't it? Usually female. Mainly female. Yeah, I'm I mean, because they got paid less. Because they got paid less, <laughs> they were cheaper. I mean, what that must have done to them in their sort of growing years. Mm. Quite incredible. I'm afraid they got their cloth ears quite quickly. Yeah, mm. cloth ears, mm. yeah, you would, wouldn't you? Thank you so much. This has been so interesting. You know, it's really nice seeing, you know, the, the, the fleeces going through the whole process, seeing what they become. Yeah.